Well, good evening. Welcome to How to Rock the Stage. I'm the host of Trigger, Rich Bontrager. Welcome back for another live show where we give you coaching, media tips, marketing tips on how to better rock the stage. We're all on stage now. Whether you know that or not, you are on stage. You could be a school teacher. You could be a political candidate. You could be a church ministry. You can be a broadcaster. You can be an engineer. We're all now appearing on camera, and this is a stage. I'm bringing my 30 years of marketing, PR, broadcasting, talk show host to better help you understand how you can rock the stage. Consumer confidence hangs now on how we show up here, on how we communicate here. And one of the most powerful things is story. But what is your story? How sharp is your story? And is it your brand story, your personal story? What is story? We're going to go deep into that tonight with an amazing guest who is a real expert on story. So you are in for a treat this evening. Coming up next week on March 30th, we're gonna wind down the month and Steve Lowell will be our guest. We're gonna continue the message of story on crappy messages. So after you hear more about the story and branding it, now let's get crappy, let's have fun, let's be even more creative. So these two are gonna to fit together wonderfully for you. And then on April 6th, Terry Short will be my guest. Six words that will change your perspective. A lot of the barrier on this communication, on this media thing is we have to change our mindset, get a new perspective of what it means to be a communicator or leader as we're on video, as we're on stage now. She's gonna give us six words that's gonna change your perspective to help you out. You don't wanna miss those shows. Again, we're here every Wednesday night live from seven to eight o'clock Eastern. Please come on back and please join us. But tonight, what do you do when you have over 20 years of sales and marketing plus 40 years of acting talents that study the art of storytelling. <laughs> what else? You start your own executive coaching business designed to help business leaders and entrepreneurs catapult their leadership using the advanced storytelling skills. We're going to get into that deeply now with our wonderful guest tonight. Please welcome founder and CEO of Story Fruition, Melissa Reeves. Welcome tonight, Melissa. Well, hello. Nice to be here. Thank you. Hey. And so as we beam in, in here tonight, we have, of course, a live audience. We are going to be able to have them engage for part of the show. But first of all, let's get to know you a little bit. You're, you're an actor. You're a CEO. You're, what are you and what exactly do you do? <laughs> I am Wonder Woman, uh, like every woman. Um, I, yes, I am a CEO. I started my own company, and it is an executive storytelling coaching business and mentoring and advising. And I am a mom. I have two amazing kids, Quincy and Maisie, 23 and 18, almost 19 years old. I don't know. I gave them water and they grew really fast. <laughs> two cats, Totoro and Thor. And I live in Seattle, Washington. So that's who I am um, just on a personal level. But yes, all day long, I concentrate on helping executives and teams at the same time, so I, I teach privately as well as in teams, how to become more captivating storytellers because that's an essential business skill. Storytelling is an, is an amazing thing and it's changed over the years mm -hmm. uh, because now we use media. Now, now we uh, have the ability for all of us to tell our, tell our brand. It used to be you hired a marketing agency and they would tell your story, create your story. Mm -hmm. Now we are the mouthpiece the center stage people, how have you changed that technique to help people? How have you helped them really understand you are the storyteller yourself, not a company now? It's, well, that's a great question because everyone is their own personal brand. We are on camera almost all day long now. And many people have realized too that like podcasts, for instance, like what we're doing today is such an awesome way to scale your exposure, to show your expertise. And you have been walking this planet as a professional for decades. And you have these pearls of wisdom that you've learned in business or you've learned personal moments that you can convert into business points. And being able to tell those stories, you are elevating your own brand. And so being able to and I'm talking about not just telling a story because everyone tells stories. What I do is I transform someone from being a storyteller, an average storyteller, to a mind movie maker. That they are actually telling a story where people are leaning in. They can see it, taste it, touch it, feel it, smell it. So you That's bring the I senses do. alive through their story. Yeah. 
And that's a major shift because you can have the data, have the facts, tell a story and go back and it just, you just move on. But when you put the sensory side into it, it sticks like glue, doesn't it? It really does. The first time, the when I really started to notice, I had I was standing in a, a room with like 300 angel investors here in Seattle, and they were all gathered to find the next big thing. They were going to be like, who's got the big, big idea? And I was watching the students of the Seattle University's business plan competition, one after another, get up and do the exact same thing. Problem! And in a whole bunch of graphs solution and a whole bunch of graphs data 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 and that's when i realized that's all left brain that's all left brain but if you don't have right brain story that's showing us why we should care you don't have a full a full presentation and so i realized that there was a need and it wasn't too long after that that i started my company (laughs) so you did kind of stumble into it it was like seeing the need, you saw the void and you said, I want to go fix it. Yes. I think there's three types of entrepreneurs. I think there's those that are fixing something that's broken, those that are doing something that no one's ever thought of, or those that are taking something that's ready for expansion. And I would probably say that I am ready for expansion because everyone's been telling stories. But if I can teach more people to just be vivid mind movie makers um, and everyone has that capability. This is very coachable stuff. In my program, people are learning all these different elements like senses and the place and the characters and the relationships within the story, how to cut out, not have too many people in your story because people don't realize that like when you have a whole bunch of people that you introduce in your story, do you know what the listener's doing? They're having to babysit all these characters you just stuck in their head. And you're like, did I have, I remember this one woman was telling me a story and I said, so how did you get into, because I work with a lot of entrepreneurs. And I said, so how did you get into this? And she was in cannabis. And she said, well, I grew up in, in Boulder and I went to a chiropractor. And then I learned that you have to have organic growth to really maximize the, the potency. She starts going into the science. And then I said, so what about the chiropractor? How do you help? And she said, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you mentioned him. She's like, Oh, no, I was just letting you know I was really a natural kind of person. And I was like, so I've been babysitting this guy in my head this whole time. (laughs) I've been worried about him. (laughs) You are creating a context of who he is, what he does, what does he look like, what does he sound like? And she's like, I don't care about that one. (laughs) The people do it all day long. They do it all day long. And so I give people when I'm working and crafting some stories. So I think every, every executive, especially leaders, need to have a library of their own stories that they can have. And that's what I do is I help build story libraries so that when you're on that podcast, you can pull out a plethora of stories that are gonna be relevant to what you're doing, but they'll be told really vividly. And- You're using all my language terms. You're stealing my terms. (laughs) (laughs) But it's so funny because like, if I were gonna redo her story, the chiropractor would be out or I'd make sure he was clear why he was there. But in that case, you can edit out people that have nothing to do with the point of the story. That's my sister. She gets edited out of stories all the time. <laughs> you guys are in for a treat. We're going to go much deeper into this. We're going to roll a poll here very briefly to get to the, you, the audience involved. This is for you tonight. Branded story. Do you have a clear branded story that we're discussing right now? Uh, yes, but it's too long. No, I have never crafted one. Sort of. Uh, but it changes every time I tell it. Um, I really need help with creating a 90 second story, which we're going to get into here in a second. And I have a three minute version of it. Cast your vote. We're going to come back to that in just a little bit. We want to hear what you are doing and see how we hit the mark here. So Melissa, you take all these stories that people are crafting and then you turn them into 99 seconds. I worked with someone today who did the long rambles 99 seconds is a good soundbite. 99 seconds is something people can grab and can hold on to, but it's so hard for them to distill it. Why do you come up with 99 seconds? First of all, why did you pick that number? Well, that one actually picked me. So it started when I realized I could start to pitch coach and I became, I, I'm standing in the Hard Rock Cafe. It's January, it's raining, and it's at an event called Founders Live. I'm watching the same thing that I'd seen in Seattle. You problem, solution, you know, and I was just like, oh. I tapped the shoulder of the CEO of the event and I said, hi, I'm a pitch coach. 
And he said, give me your card right now. <laughs> and he was doing 99 second pitches. And I became his Seattle pitch coach. So if you go to Founders Live Seattle in anything on YouTube, you'll see these, ex these entrepreneurs standing up in front of an audience. And in 99 seconds, they're going to show us how they can change the world. And they do it. We do a story, which is showing the problem with characters. We do the solution, which is them. They can wear a cape, come in and solve the problem. They can drop the data about their go-to-market, their accolades, their team, and their ask. It's all done in 99 seconds. And their slides are also just as scrutinized. So it's not just your words, but your slides and presentations are also to back up your story. And many times that's where I see a lot of derailing of the stories. The, the speaker might be really good, but then they throw a slide up and there's like 80 things on it. And what you're doing as the presenter and presenter and storyteller are like interchangeable to me. As the storyteller, when you put a slide up and you've got the kitchen sink in it, you have just told your audience, stop listening to me, please. Read my crazy slide. <laughs> that's and probably the number one thing that drives me crazy. They don't even need you to talk. You gave them everything right here they don't need you anymore or they just leave they check out so in my book i talk about like the train derailed right so you got to get the train back on the tracks i had a meeting today with a client and she was giddy because she's been applying the things that were working and like after her presentation she had all these people calling her contacting her she had new business it was great but there was one slide she showed me and i went "Ooh, that's a lot of words and she goes you know what's so funny is that that's the only moment in the entire presentation that I saw people grab their phones. I'm like, yeah. So we took that slide out. And oftentimes we will take that slide out and just put an image. And that image is what's gonna lock into the mind as the storyteller, the presenter, tells you what they want you to remember. I'm a big person for visuals. I like visuals, but not typically what we would see. So what I coach for the people I work with, very similar, I'll say, Put a force, put a broken car, put yeah. something up there, maybe one keyword, but you are the storyteller. This is a reinforcement. This is something that brings together the imagery, which you're going to talk about imagery, I'm sure, but this is the imagery to get the story to stick further, but it's not to put one bullet point, two bullet point, three bullet points. You kill people with that, don't you? You do. You do. Well, it's, I mean, you don't kill them. Obviously, I mean, we all went to college. Professors do it all the time. It's a, it's a common way in academia to, to teach, to do bullet points and stuff. But is there a better way? You know, can, can we do this in a better, more captivating way? And I say emphatically, yes. But how, much, uh, how many of us honestly fell asleep listening to those professors with their bullet points? Or if we're trying to get them to stay alive and stay with us. Right. I may still do it, but it's not effective. <laughs> I had one though. I had a professor that was telling Greek mythology and it was at two in the afternoon in a very heated room at the University of Michigan. And I was already like hitting my siesta time and they would just start telling me stories and I fell asleep <laughs> thinking about, you know, Adonis. <laughs> <laughs> so what makes up a good 99 second? Because there's story arcs, there's flow. There's certain things I'm sure you say you really need to build this in. Yeah. You know, I, I talk about takeoff and landing. You need to know where you're taking off. You know, have to know where you're going to land the plane to grab the audience. What do you talk about when you help people frame this up? Great question. Yeah. Um, well, all stories need to have an aha and an art, right? Like you have to have a beginning, middle and end. But the beginning is, is the most important part and the most exciting and the scariest part for most stories because the story setup is what I, in my process, I call it pro. We do it in improv. It's characters, relationships, objectives, which is your stakes and your where. And if you miss any of those in your setup, it's like having a three-legged table. It's just a little wobbly because what's happening is as the storyteller, if you miss one of those things, like if you say, you know, so I'm a kid and I'm driving down the road with my dad. Right there, people are gonna be like, how old are you? What kind of road? Did you like your dad? What kind of car were you in? What was the weather like? They're doing that because you were so vague and it's not as memorable. But if I say it's a Sunday morning and I'm with my dad in his slick RX-7 and we are whizzing down the road and we're listening to the Rolling Stones, it's a great Sunday. So much imagery that I've put in your mind slowly but surely because I, and within that, just that setup, 
I don't really care what road you and your mind come up with. I just want to get you on a country road. I want you to see me in a red sports car. That's, and then I'm in the way I talk about my dad with my dad, you can sense our relationship. So, you know, or I could say, and we're in my dad's beaten up van and he's playing Rolling Stones again. I hate Rolling Stones. <laughs> Taking me to the carnival. <laughs> yeah. Right. Taking me to the carnival. <laughs> That's right. So there's so many things that you can do to literally change the mind movie with just a single word or answer a question. And if that's not done in the first couple of sentences, in the first, and then like when I'm working with entrepreneurs, the first 20 seconds, the problem must be very clearly seen and felt. It must be clearly seen and felt. So you can do that with a character going through the problem so that we can feel their emotion, their frustration, their fear, whatever it is that they're solving for. We must show that very quickly so that the audience is leaning in and they're going, oh, okay, I get it. Okay, or I know someone like that. I'm relating to this. Now, people may not be noticing this, but I want to point it out. You're also storytelling using imagery, but you are using your voice with highs and lows and pitches. And right there, you said, Sometimes they're going to lean in, but you went to a whisper. Mm -hmm. You have everyone literally doing this. Wait, 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 what? Talk about the storytelling and the technique of the voice that plays with the picture, that plays with this. Yeah, that's important too, to learn how to use your instrument to tell this story, right? Absolutely. We are so lucky because we're walking instruments, right? We have our voice, we have our facial expressions, we have our arms. There's so many things that we, our body language, our tones, our pace, um, the pregnant pause, when you slow down to make a point and you let the audience catch up with you, this is all affecting neurologically the brain. It's, it's, it's affecting like, if I want someone to feel um, like, let's say I'm a nonprofit and I want to pull on your heartstrings so that you will become a donor at my fundraiser. I want to tell a story that's literally going to infuse oxytocin into you. And so the way my tones work, the, the way I'm setting up the story, it's probably the plight of someone like a homeless person that they, they may be saving. I've seen executive directors come up and it's their fundraiser. And I've seen them actually open with a pie chart, not the story of someone that they saved and that character and their, their plight, right? And so the voice and the tones, but let's say I'm doing something like, let's say I sell roller coasters. I'm not going to be like, so you're going to get onto the roller coaster. You're going to be like, you're going to get on, <laughs> you're going to strap in and you're going to hold on, you know? And so I'm using my voice differently. My pace is changing and I am changing your brain to have dopamine. Take them on the journey. Yeah. Now talk about the ending, the landing of the plane. But now they've taken them on the journey. They're all right at the moment. Now you have to land it to get the response that you really want to close the deal. Right. So as I'm crafting stories, I obviously I, I say it's a storyteller's mind movie. We do it scene by scene. So each scene is honoring everything and it's, it's advancing and expanding as we need. But that last scene is usually in business storytelling is the reflection. It's the, the story is ended, but what did that adventure do to teach you who you are and why you're better? Because all stories really are a transformation of who you are. You were one person before something happened that put you on your journey. And now you're different now because of that journey, you know, and there's a ton of business stories that everyone in their, in their arsenal or their library should have because the, it's, it's the ending. It's the pearls of the wisdom that you're going to share that I find is landing that airplane so that people go, Oh my goodness, you made a point. Sometimes they don't even know why you're telling the story. I have a client right now. We're talking about skydiving. It's a great story. It's about accountability. It's about follow through. It's about free falling. It's about trust. There's so many elements that she can use that one story in a podcast interview, six different ways. And that's where going back to your phrase, you need to have a library of these. You, and when, when, when I'm on stage, I know the talk I'm going to give. I do have a library so I can read the crowd. I can know this. I can change stories and still get the same results that better fit the audience because I have a library in me that will fit this crowd. That's the next level of storytelling, isn't it? Absolutely. You've got to know your audience. So sometimes like there's some industries that are like, hmm, we don't like stories. Science. Sometimes they don't like the stories. But the scientists that tell the stories are the ones that are getting the rest of the non-science people in the room. This is, this is neurological fact. 
And so, you know, if you were talking to a whole bunch of scientists, you may revert a little bit more towards that data because that's what they feed off of. That's that's their that's their safe place, their 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 expertise. But I can tell you, any scientist that got up and did that and opened with a story about a patient and then showed the data, you're still going to have a more effective result, even from colleagues, right? But again, every audience is different, but it doesn't mean storytelling doesn't have a place. Well, we're going to go back to more of this conversation. We're going to break right now and go back to our poll. You can all cast your vote. Look at this for a moment, Melissa. Some people have long stories. We, we have long three-minute stories, and yes, but it's too long. Put those two together. Most people are doing too long of stories. They're not doing the micro stories. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much most people speaking today across the board, isn't it? I think so. And that's mostly, I think, because people haven't taken the time to what I call weed whack or craft your story so that it's very succinct. Usually stories go on too long because people are rambling a little bit. They are saying things, they could say it once, but they're saying it several times. They could say something like, so my husband has, I, the, the man that I love enters with two teenage kids. I don't really like kids. I don't like kids that much. Kids make me nervous. Kids scare me. It's like, you could have cut 30 seconds right there. <laughs> Just find your best line. Cause it might be funny. Cause it could be something that people relate to. And it might make sense to keep that line in there, but say it succinctly. And also say only the scenes in your adventure story of who you are. So I call it your story fruition. That is a story that every single person should be crafting. And most people haven't. Most people I would say for those out there in the audience, ask yourself, when they ask you, so how did you get into your line of work? Do you nail this? Or are you kind of like, well, I'm going to give you my LinkedIn resume. <laughs> uh, I was three months old and you go way far back. <laughs> <laughs> I started off as a paper boy. Yeah. I worked at McDonald's. I eventually found out I didn't like being a construction worker, so I landed on PR. Okay, way too much. Way too much. Cut those scenes. But there may be a scene when you were a paper boy that might be a fun story that shows your wisdom. So it's not, so when I mine story mining with mm -hmm. my clients, sometimes stories come out and people will be like, why am I talking about this? I'm like, I don't know. It wants to come out and you may or may not use it. But then they usually call me and like, you're not even going to believe what story came out of my interview. The one I never I, thought I'd tell. <laughs> right. Okay. So that's exactly where I was going to go. I've coached several people who are rock stars in their area and they want to come up with a great story right away. This whole, how cool, how accomplished they are. And I've turned it to tell me your tragedy mm -hmm. and then take me to the why you're so good now. So you can help people realize they may be stuck where you once were. They never want to experience that and you can get them here. Start with the pain point. Is that a good technique and storytelling to start with? Man, I hated my boss. I was going to walk out on the job. The teams were completely destructive, but let me help you fix your teams because I now know how to do it right. Does that type of technique work? That can absolutely. I think it depends on the person. There's a couple of ways, you know, that you can structure a story. And one is that you can, like, so in my own story fruition, I, I start off dark, but I can start off. I, there's two ways I can start it. So if I, to, is it okay if I give an example on that? Yeah, please. Okay. So there's one where I could be like, I'm an executive storytelling coach. I work globally with people all over the planet and I help them tell stories so that they shine and show their expertise on any media interview that they need. And they are so happy with the work that we do because it's a lifetime skill. But it wasn't always like that. It's January 2nd. 2019 and I'm on the phone and I'm crying. I'm pissed. I am so upset because I have just been fired from a job that I hate. <laughs> I hate this job. It's making me miserable. I don't care about the industry anymore. It's clearly showing how much I hate it and I get fired and I'm panicked in my higher self because I sometimes have conversations with myself and I sometimes hear it. It said to me, don't worry about it. It's fine. We got you the pink slip because we had to get you out of there. <laughs> you were miserable, but trust us. It's going to be fine. Trust us. What are you talking about? I was so panicked. And at the same time, 
Not only can I not get a job because my child is sick and needs some professional help. And so now that's playing on my, my, my weighted shoulders. I don't know what I'm going to do when all of a sudden the university or Seattle University calls me and says, remember when you said you wanted to be a pitch coach for us? We remembered that. Do you want to come in and coach? Like, yeah. What else have I got to do? I, I got to do this. And that's when I realized that I was able to work with these entrepreneurs and help them infuse storytelling into their pitches. And it started to catch on and it started to get a lot of conversations going. When I realized maybe, maybe people will pay me to do this. The phone rings, it's a CEO friend of mine. And he says, we're getting ready for our Andreessen Horowitz uh, presentation. All the numbers are there, it's great, but it has absolutely no heart. What do I do? And I said, Tom, we have all those success stories that we found that were such heartwarming stories where you're the hero, put those in the presentation. So we do. And he calls me and he says, I just closed $35 million. And I put the stories in my presentation. And that's when I knew, hmm, yes, <laughs> I can do this. And that's when I started Story Fruition. And now I get up every day with joy in my heart spring in my step because I'm doing something that honors who I am, my sales, my marketing, and my acting, and it can bring it out of other people. Now, did everyone see how that works? Did you, did you feel the roller coaster? Did you feel the mood? Did you hear the voice go in and out to pull you in? That's what Story Fruition is about. That's what you can do. On Melissa's website, it says storytelling is essential for business skill. You have to have this skill to do business better, correct, Melissa? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's no other way around it anymore, is it? You, you have to have this skill really strong in your utility belt. You just become more magnetic. I mean, in sales, I was, so I was an enterprise sales forever, right? You were in broadcasting. It's like, you know, the people, like salespeople are your storytellers. A case study is a case story. And most people just look at the sheet and go, yeah, look at that. That's your vertical. It's 201% over what it was before. <laughs> but if a storyteller came in and said, let me show you how that happened. When we entered this client's situation, they were almost going to close their doors. They had no hope. They were ready to stop. When we listened to them and we found out that we could absolutely turn their situation around. Now, that was a general because I'm just winging that one right now. But you can already kind of see the difference. It's like yeah. you start getting people in the picture. You could go even further and just say, when I first met Sarah, she was the vice president of HR and she was practically crying at her desk when I walked in. That's even better. So sometimes when we're crafting these stories, anytime I hear something general, I'll always be like, stop. Let's double click on that. Who's Sarah? What'd she look like? How old is she? What was on her desk? What kind of awards were around? Is she crying? Was she really crying? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get deeper and deeper on the second half of the show here. We're going to bring you on in a moment. We're going to bring cameras, microphones. You're going to ask Melissa the question that you want to know about. And right now, Melissa, what's the best way to get in touch with you? And tell us more about what you're going to do because the book coming out this summer. Just give a brief little highlight of you and how we can better find you as I drop in a bunch of social media into the chat box for everybody. Well, thank you. Yeah, storyfruition.com is the best way. I mean, I've got myself that's Melissa's story fruition. And, and I love to um, have, you know, people who are interested in elevating their leadership, give me a call. We can talk about it for free for the first half hour and look at it. Um, I'm also a professional storyteller. So if you just, so I do two things. So I do business storytelling, but I also am a storyteller. So I go on things like the moth. I was on PBS this week and I tell personal stories and you will see, you've kind of seen some today. You've seen me creating a mind movie I just take that stuff, dramatic stuff and comedic stuff, and I bring it to the boardroom. So that's all on my site as well. So if you want to see any work, um, I've got it there. I'm on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. I tweet sometimes. <laughs> and she's live here on How to Rock the Stage. I'm so here right we're, now. We're going to have, <laughs> we're gonna have more coming up with Melissa. I, as always, you can get coaching assistance right here on How to Rock the Stage. I'm also launching brand new. I'm putting up the coaching. I've done select work with this, but I'm opening up to anyone to do one-on-one coaching to help you be a better interviewee 
I want to get on these cameras. I want to get in this podcast. I want to tell these stories. I'm coaching you to be a better interviewee. Often we get, we say yes to being on a podcast and be on the show. Then we struggle. We don't have the right messaging. We just don't know how to tell the story. We don't know how to get good sound bites back out of it. I want to help you better do this. So contact me, Rich at richbontrager.net. The information is right there as well. Even my phone number, so you can contact me to, be able to help you better rock the stage.